Hi everyone, Vindicator Jones here. As we all know, Horizons Guardians beta has dropped and with a long list of changes, it's been a very interesting experience. I'll try and cover as much as I can in some upcoming videos, but for today, I'm just going to discuss my first thoughts about the new passenger ship, the Beluga. To be honest, ever since we first saw the images of the Beluga at Gamescon, I was quite underwhelmed. The original concept art was just so much cooler. I was really hoping for something more along those lines. But instead, we get something that looks like the back end of a cruise ship has interfered inappropriately with the front end of an airliner, and not in a good way. Now, I know a lot of people disagree with me, and that's cool. It's just my personal opinion. To be honest, it has kind of grown on me, and the internal cockpit area is pretty nice. I just wish they had done something different with the front end and told the 12-year-old with the Meccano set to ease up on the wings. Personally, I think it would have looked nicer with more of a Concorde wing than all those bits and pieces sticking out. But enough of my petty squabbling, looks are only a small part of a ship's value. Is the Beluga a good ship? Is it going to dominate the role of passenger deliveries? Is it really worth your hard-earned credits to purchase? The short answer is, well, kinda, but more on that in a little bit. I'll also be discussing passenger missions and touch briefly on ship launch fighters but I'll discuss that in more detail in my upcoming videos. Anywho, let's move right into it. Let's have a look at the Beluga in outfitting and see what's what. Now, I've already put it built together so we don't have to waste too much time mucking around. Um, just quickly go through a few things first. Our hard points, pretty basic. Got um, five class two hard points. I've got some pulse turrets here for the moment. I'll probably put on some mines, but I was a bit worried about running mines and launching fighters. Knowing my luck, I'd probably end up destroying my own fighter. Uh, utility mounts, got quite a few. Got six utility mounts, which is quite nice. But you'll probably find that you're very limited with your choices due to the low class power plant. And we'll look at that next. And this is where we can start to see the problem. Um, Beluga comes with a class six power plant which really, honestly, I would have preferred to have seen a class seven. Now I can understand this is a passenger ship, so it's not meant to have heavy duty power systems, but even still, I think if you're gonna build a, such a large ship like this with six utility slots, you're gonna really need a larger size power plant. Having class seven thrusters, the same as an Anaconda or Corvette, gives the Beluga a reasonably good top boost speed of 300 meters per second. I would have liked to have seen it to be a little bit faster, possibly around about 350 meters per second, as I think the Beluga is really going to need its speed in order to get away from pirates. What about the Beluga's ability to launch fighters and its shields? Shouldn't that be enough to take care of the pirates? Well, you would think so, but there are a few problems. Now, the Class 7 frame shift drive, I think it's good. It's not fantastic. It's a bit better than the Orca. You get around about 20 light years. Um, but with engineering, you probably can get it up to around 30. I'm guessing around 30, I'm not too sure. Class 8 life support, well, I'm assuming because it is a passenger ship, it would need a rather large life support system. Here we go again with the power distributor. I do think it requires a Class 7, but I can understand being a civilian passenger liner that uh, you wouldn't require a military grade power distributor. These sorts of things, you've got to give it a bit of time before you start to understand if it's good enough or not. It probably will be because, it, again, you won't be relying on weapons so much, but we'll see moving forwards. Now, as you can see here, we've just got standard Class 5 sensors and a Class 5 fuel tank. Anyway, let's move on. Okay, now we'll move on to optional internal, and this is where things start to come a bit undone. But let's have a look. Now, although the Beluga does have four Class 6 slots, only two of them can be used to install things like fuel scoops and um, shield generators, etc. And also the fighter hangar. The other two are only able to install cargo racks, arm reinforcements and passenger cabins. Now, while that might seem logical, it is going to cause some problems and I'll explain why that's going to cause some problems because you do have two class 5 slots but again both of these can only install those items which does cause a very big problem in my opinion it means then you can only run a class 6 shield 
you can't run a class four shield you cannot if you want a big fuel scoop you're gonna have to sacrifice your fighter hanger um because the only other choice you have is a class four fuel scoop which to me is a really really bad idea especially on a ship of this size now where it gets a little bit more confusing then you have four class three slots now you can't install passenger cabins in these slots so which really makes them a bit useless sure you can chuck in scanners uh planetary vehicle hangar and some cargo racks but really they're useless what i would love to see is to sacrifice two class three slots and give us a class five slot now i completely understand it's arguable that uh, doing that might make the ship a bit unbalanced but i do think if you're going to have a ship of this size that's going to be the class leader for passenger transport you need at least a, sh a good fuel scoop a good shield and because it can carry a fighter then you should have the ability to carry a fighter as well those other two items i think being forced to compromise is a pretty bad design choice especially when you have four class three slots which are practically useless another small complaint i have is that i'm unable to apply my black friday paint job um which okay it's a bit trivial but i really wanted to see this in black hopefully they'll change that when we go to the live build though one thing i did notice however is it looks like in the future we will be able to adjust our weapon colors i'm assuming it'll be like a paint skin that you purchase in the frontier store and then apply to your ship i think it's a great idea it's not something you have to have but if you want to have it it's there free paint skin to the person who can guess what color i'll pick first ah too late <laughs> sorry about that anyway moving on so how well does a beluga handle the big black the reality of the situation is you're not very likely going to be taking the beluga into a res site or combat zone and with good reason with around 300 megajoules of shielding limited power plant and speed makes fighting enemy ships in the beluga well kind of interesting don't get me wrong for a ship of its size it actually handles not too bad and its thruster responsiveness is certainly significantly better than what i was expecting Part of me was prepared for handling similar to the Cutter, but surprisingly, it handles somewhere between a Corvette and an Anaconda. Perhaps a little closer to the Anaconda. Its supercruise handling is actually quite nice too, and turns are relatively easy and faster than all the big three ships. Well, don't quote me on that, but it just feels quite nice. After trying a multitude of weapons loadouts, including gibbles, turrets, missiles and mines, I think your best options are going to be mines, turrets or missiles. The hardpoint placements on the Beluga are, well, not really designed for straight out combat. And well, of course, I mean, it's a passenger ship. You don't see a cruise ship with missile tubes or gun emplacements now, do you? With two hardpoints on top towards the rear, another two hardpoints underneath around midships, and one hardpoint underneath towards the front, it's kind of self-evident that Beluga's weapons are purely defensive in nature. It's really hard to get all your weapons on target when attacking targets directly in front of you. And that's primarily to your own hull getting in the way of your weapons firing arcs. The Beluga's weapons are designed to attack targets from behind as you attempt to run away and that's why in my opinion you're better off running with mines and ditch the turrets. What you can do is run the four hard points towards the rear with mines and then a missile launcher on the front of the ship in order to finish targets off, if you're so inclined. Sure, you have the ability to use fighters, but realistically with the Beluga, your best bet is to use the fighter as a distraction while you try and get away in your own ship. To be honest, I'm on the fence whether the Beluga really needs to install a fighter bay. If you use mines and boost your way out of trouble, you should be fine. Don't get me wrong, I think the fighters are very effective, but with the current limitations of the Beluga, I really don't think you need them. Removing the fighter bay allows you to run a big fuel scoop and shield, which I think makes more sense in the long run. Anyway, here are my final thoughts about the Beluga. It's a nice big ship with great handling and fantastic cockpit view. But there are some big issues that are going to keep me away from the Beluga. After spending about a week in the Beluga, the power plant issue has become quite a problem. I find myself constantly juggling power settings and restricting my build. While I agree there should be some restrictions for balancing, I feel the restrictions on the Beluga are just too much, especially since there are so many other compromises you have to live with, such as poor shielding. 
Having module lock slots on the Beluga does make sense, but in its current configuration and not being able to install a large fuel scoop with a fighter bay and shield is just madness. Why even bother with the Beluga when you can fly another ship that can load up with passenger modules and still have the flexibility of installing any modules you like in other slots? Although the Beluga does have a nice top speed, having such lackluster shielding means you're going to be a very easy target when you're trying to escape an interdiction or mass lock event. I would like to see either a little more speed or a boost to the base modifier for the shields. To be honest, if you're interested in passenger missions and want to look the part, I feel the Orca is probably your best shot. Having such a high top boost speed I think is going to be far more valuable than having more internal module slots. The reality is the Anaconda, Corvette and Cutter are going to be infinitely better as passenger ships than the Beluga, and to me that kind of feels wrong. I really feel that the Beluga needs a massive overhaul. Instead of being in the 70 million credit class of ships, it should be around Anaconda money, possibly around 100 million credits instead, and have similar internal module slots to the Anaconda. At least then we can install a class 7 shield and have class 4 slots instead of class 3, which can be used more effectively. Maybe that would be a very unpopular decision and players might complain that it is too expensive, but I think in its current form there are too many compromises and that makes the Beluga feel very limited. The Beluga should be the best ship for passenger transport, but in its current form it just simply isn't. It's a shame because the more I fly it, the more I like it and have started to appreciate its design a little more. I just hope Frontier might rethink its structure and give it the prestige it deserves. Well I hope you enjoyed my review of the Beluga and you found it a bit useful. If you did, then please hit that like button and subscribe. Sorry I haven't been releasing much content lately, but the bills have to be paid and the boss, my missus, says I have to spend more time working and less time making space videos. Moving forwards, I'm going to be setting up a Patreon page so that I can please my boss a little as I would much rather make elite videos than working on boring corporate videos, which is my full time job. If you think you would like to support me on Patreon, please leave a comment below and any suggestions you might have on what I could probably offer as part of a Patreon support reward. Anyway, this is Vindicator Jones signing off. Thanks for watching. And as always, see you out there in the big black.